boys and girls to the candy store. And today's show is about my very favorite subject. Today's show is about Today's the letter is the letter fish hooks. And boys and girls, take it from me, Elmer Barnes. It's expert on fish removal from large and small bodies of water. If you're going to catch big fish, you need to have fish hooks of large dimensions. And today's show was all about fish hooks. Elmer, what are you doing? Well, after all, Miss Lana, I am the resident fishing extraordinaire in this area. And seeing as how today's show was on fish hooks, well, I just wanted to tell... Elmer, today's show is not about fish hooks. Those are not fish hooks on your line. Those are jays. Today's show is about jay. Will they catch fish? You can't catch fish on jays. Uh-oh. You should have told that to all those fish I caught today. <gasps> you caught fish on jays? Well, just a few. <laughs> Elmer Barnes, you could catch fish with a baseball glove. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, by the way, a letter came for you today. Here. Ooh, a letter from me. Oh, I'm going to open it and look at it right now. wonder who could have sent it. Let's see. It says my, my Uncle Ed left me a... A million dollars! <laughs> Must have died. I'm a millionaire! <laughs> I didn't know you had an Uncle Ed. Me neither. Well, maybe he's on my mother's, sister's, grandpa's, uncle's, cousin's, nephew's side of the family. Once or twice removed. Twice, because two is today's number. You're not supposed to tell today's number, just today's letter. Sorry, but... But I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I can't believe it. No more work for me. <laughs> Boys and girls, today's letter is the letter J. And J is for Jesus. And the Bible says in Philippians 2.10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. J is for Jesus. T! The letter J. 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 J for Dylan. The letter J. 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 J is for jelly beans. J. J is for Jesus. And I'm laying down a rap on your own TV. When I say the memory verse, be sure and say it back to me. Cause my name is Ryman Simon. I'm the memory verse MC. Philippians 2.10. Philippians 2.10. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Say Philippians 2.10. Philippians 2.10. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Come on, Philippians 2.10. Philippians 2.10. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Well, I'm Ryman Simon, the MVMC, and I'm laying down a rap on your own TV. Hey, Nick, did you hear the news about Elmer? Yeah, he can catch fish with a baseball glove. Everybody he knows that. I'm talking about he's a millionaire. Elmer, a millionaire? Yeah, he got an inheritance from his rich uncle, and now he's a millionaire. Well, praise God. Elmer Barnes a millionaire. But we're all millionaires in Jesus. Yes, yeah, too bad Jesus doesn't do things here on the earth like he once did. Oh, yeah. Let's you know, he used to raise people from the dead. 
He used to heal folks of terrible diseases. Yeah, he still He did. fed the multitudes. He even cast the devil out of folks and taught his disciples how to fish and not even use a baseball glove. Yeah, but Lefty, you see, he's yeah, too... Yeah, it's too bad the day of miracles has passed. No, Lefty, no. Yeah, I sure wish Jesus did things today like he used to. Lefty, he does. Really? Yes, Jesus hasn't changed. He still does things today just like he did back in Bible days for people who know how to use the Word of God and believe in the wonderful name of Jesus, the name above every name. That's good to know. Hey, where are you going? I'm going over to Elmer's and grovel at his feet. Maybe he'll give me some of his money. I sure hate it when a plum growed up man like that grovels. Man, this is the worst thing in the world that can happen. I mean the absolute worst thing in the world. What happened? Jeannie, that little creep Johnny Smithers got in a basketball and threw it up in the air. Well, that's what you're supposed to do with basketballs. Not when they land on a picket fence. He busted my ball, Jeannie, and I'm going to clobber him. Now, wait a minute. You calm down. Don't get mad. It's impossible to keep from getting mad. I'm going to let that little guy have it right between the eyes. Now, listen here. You can get a new basketball. A new basketball? Do you know how much the old one cost? Well, it was a lot of money, wasn't it? Twenty dollars. And I can't get twenty dollars, Jeannie. I'll never get another basketball. Well, why don't you pray? Pray? Yeah. Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. God would like for you to have a new basketball. He doesn't want you to be sad, and he especially doesn't want you to go beating up Johnny Smithers just because he busted your old one. You think God would give me a new basketball? Sure he would. Does God have basketballs in heaven? Well, he may not have them in heaven, but he knows how to get you one. Remember, you pray to the Father in Jesus' name, and, and he gives you whatever you pray for. All right, Jeannie. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't want to do it. Uh, I'd rather just bop old Johnny Smithers right in the nose. But that won't get you a basketball, will it? No, I guess you're right. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, any time. Well, I guess I should pray. You know, the Bible does say whatever I ask the Father in Jesus' name, he'll give it to me. That's John 16, 23. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the Father in Jesus' name, and he's going to give me a basketball. Somehow, some way, I'll get one. That's for sure. Hey, kid, it won't do any good to pray. God doesn't hear prayers like that. He only is interested in spiritual things. I wonder if that scripture really does work. I wonder if Jesus was talking about things like basketballs when we said, or when he said we could pray for anything. No, he wasn't talking about basketballs. Kid, God's not interested in stuff like that. God only cares about things if they're spiritual. He doesn't care about what you play with or any of that stuff. Uh, God doesn't care about your basketball. No, uh, I bet God doesn't really even care about my basketball. I bet he won't even answer a prayer like that. Yeah, doesn't do any good. If I were you, I wouldn't pray. I probably won't even pray now. It probably won't do any good. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're here for our story time. And we've got a wonderful story today for you. And it's called The Way Home. Wake up. It's time to get up now, son. Papa nudged the little cub from where he was sleeping near the big river. Hurry up, Papa said. It's the perfect time to catch some more fish. Brindle's eyes popped open. More fish, he said to himself. We have caught all the fish in the whole river last night. There couldn't be any left. Okay, he said out loud. I'm coming, Papa. Brindle got up on his feet and headed over to the bank of the big river. Wow, Brindle couldn't believe his eyes. The river was full of fish of all sizes and colors. The fish were swimming everywhere he looked. Papa began to catch the slippery fish just as quickly as they swam by. Within just a few minutes, the two bears had all the fish they could eat. Eat as much as you can, Papa told the little cub. You'll need your strength to make the trip home. But you're coming with me, aren't you? Asked the small bear. Papa looked at Brindle. No, son, he answered. You will have to make this trip without me. Brindle was afraid. He had never been this far away from home before. Don't worry, Papa comforted. If you get lost or you need anything, just ask one of the forest animals and they will help you. Everyone in this part of the forest knows me. Just tell them you are my son and you will be fine. Now you must hurry back, said Papa. I'll see you again soon. Bye, Papa, 
Brindle hated to leave. He was having so much fun at the big river. He was also a little worried about traveling so far on his own, but he knew his father would never lie to him or do anything that would hurt him. The little cub hadn't traveled very far at all when he became confused. There were so many little paths that led away from the trail he was on that it was difficult to know exactly which way to go. Brindle looked all around and he saw something move in the tree above him. Hello, he called out. Hello, came the answer. The voice belonged to a brown tree squirrel. I I'm afraid I'm lost, Brindle said. My father is Papa Bear and he said that I could ask someone to help me. Papa Bear? asked the little squirrel. He's the nicest bear in the forest. One day he helped me shake nuts out of a tall tree. I'd be happy to help you. The squirrel proceeded to tell Brindle exactly which way to go and what to look for to stay on the right trail. Brindle thanked the little animal and headed off down the right trail. Brindle went a very long way, but he was confident that he was on the right path. He had passed the big rock shaped like a turtle and the short twisted pine tree the squirrel had told him about. Brindle's only problem now was he was getting hungry again. The little bear knew that it must be very late in the day. Before he could even look around for food, a large raccoon popped up from out of nowhere. Hello, said Brindle. Howdy, said the raccoon. Are you lost, little bear? No, Brindle answered, but I'm very hungry. My father is Papa Bear, and he said that if I needed anything, I should just ask and someone would help me. Oh, I'd do anything for Papa Bear, the raccoon told Brindle. Once a wolf was chasing me and Papa Bear scared him away. If Papa Bear sent you to me, I'll help you get some food. Thank you so much. Brindle was very hungry. The raccoon took Brindle to a wild blackberry patch and then showed him a shortcut to the bear's den. Just before the sun was setting, Brindle arrived home. Brindle was very proud of himself for traveling so far, but he was even more proud to have such a good father as Papa Bear. You know, boys and girls, just like Papa Bear's good name was the key for Brindle's needs, our Father God has given us a key, and that key is the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is given to us for our salvation, for our healing, for our prosperity, for everything that we have need of. Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, Every knee will bow. Well, Lord, I am here today to ask you for a new basketball. You see, some folks say that you're not interested in those kinds of things, that you don't answer those kinds of prayers. But uh, I've read the Bible, and uh, it says, Whatever I ask you in Jesus' name, you will give it to me. Lord, you know how Johnny Smithers busted my basketball and all. Well, instead of getting mad, I'd rather trust you for a new one. And I'm asking you for one, right now in Jesus' name. And I know you love me because you are my Heavenly Father. And I know you're interested in me. And I know you give this to me now, uh, by faith, in Jesus' name. Thanks, Lord. Amen. Oh, Gene, oh, Gene, guess what? What is it, Jeannie? J Johnny Smithers, he's at the front door, and he's got his dad with him. Johnny Smithers is at the front door, and he's got his dad? That's right, and they got a new basketball. Well, when Johnny Smithers' dad heard about what happened to yours, he bought you a new one, Eugene. Hey, God answered my prayer even before I prayed it. All right. <laughs> I lift my hands to you because of my love, because of my love, because of my love, I lift my hands to you because of my love, I worship you 
You know, boys and girls, we have an enemy, but you can't see this enemy with these natural eyes because this enemy that we have is invisible. His name is the devil. Now, you can defeat the devil, but you can't do it with your natural fists or a gun or anything like that. Nope. You can defeat the devil, though, by using the name of Jesus. You see, the devil is a liar, and he's always wagging his tongue and lying to the people of God saying, you're not healed. Things aren't going to work out for you. You know what you need to do when the devil says that? Shut up, devil. Leave me alone in the name of Jesus. And it rips his tongue right out, and he has to shut up. You can't talk if you don't have a tongue. Whenever you use the name of Jesus, and he's trying to put something on you, and it looks like the devil's going to do it, and you use the name of Jesus, it disarms the devil. It's hard to beat up on anybody when they don't have any arms. You know what? When you use the name of Jesus, it causes the devil to get all confused and he'll just lose his head. That's right. The name of Jesus will defeat the devil every time. And then all you've got left is something like a pillow. You know what? The Bible says that the devil only belongs in one place in your life and that is under your feet. Now there's one thing you've got to have if you're going to defeat the devil. You got to have a brand new spirit. And you say, Nicodemus, how do I get a brand new spirit? Well, Jesus can give you one. You see, Jesus did all the work for you. He died on the cross for your sins. And when you receive him by faith in that mighty name, Jesus gives you a brand new heart. Would you like to get one today? If you would, let's pray together. I'll pray and you repeat the words that I say. And if you really mean it, Jesus is going to come live in your heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin. And Jesus, I receive you and your forgiveness and your love right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, you just got a brand new spirit. And Jesus came and he lives on the inside of you and has given you his love. And I'll tell you what, you have the power right now to speak that mighty name of Jesus, the name above every name, and you can defeat the devil in that name. The letter J. J is for jelly bean. J. The letter J. J. J is for Jaguar. J. The letter J. J is for Jesus. Is this a leopard? That's close, but if you said yes, you're wrong. It's a Jaguar. Jaguars are the New World cousins of the leopards. Although they look much alike, there are some differences. 
Jaguars are stockier and somewhat heavier than leopards. Jaguars have larger concentrations of black spots than do leopards. Some jaguars appear to be solid black, but they're really not. The spots on a black jaguar's coat can be seen clearly if you look closely enough. Jaguars are found throughout Mexico, Central, and South America. But at one time, they ranged as far north as Arizona, New Mexico, and California. I'm sure glad the jaguars don't live near me. How would you like to meet this guy on a dark night? Jaguars are expert fishers and swimmers, and they prey upon deer, fish, tapirs, and pigs. They have even been known to attack and kill alligators. But jaguars do not attack human beings or puppets. Thank goodness, that makes me feel a whole lot better. Imagine what would happen if a jaguar tried to wash away his spots. Do you suppose that he could? Well, all his washing and scrubbing would be in vain. His spots are there for good. That reminds me of another kind of spot. Sin makes a spot on your spirit when you do something wrong. And all the washing and scrubbing in the world won't do any good. In fact, there's only one thing in all the world that can cleanse a heart of its sin. And that is the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood was shed so that our sin spots could be washed away. And if you haven't already, ask Jesus to come into your heart. He will take away your sin and make you a new creature. Well, so long, Mr. and Mrs. Jaguar. I like you right where you are, in that cage. Hey, Miss Trudy Lou, I'm looking for Elmer. I heard he got a million dollars. Well, I hadn't seen Elmer, but I just saw Lefty. What was he doing? He was looking for Elmer. He wanted to grovel at his feet about some money he got from Uncle Ed. Oh, that Lefty. What you got here? Two babies. This is Sally, and this is Sammy. <laughs> well, why you got two babies? Because today's number is two. One, two. Why don't you take this baby? Okay. This is our big break on national TV. National television? Nobody mentioned TV to me. This TV stuff is a snap. Just watch the red light. See, that's our camera. Well, it's sure a good thing today's number ain't 47. You'd have your own daycare center. Oh, this guy is talented. Not only does he do law enforcement, he's a stand-up comic. He's so funny, I forgot to laugh. Nicodemus, don't you want to stay here and help me take care of these babies? Uh, stay here and help you with the babies. Uh, well, I'd love to, but, uh, uh, I can't. I can't because I've got to find Elmer, so... So, take him. Uh, see ya. Hey, hey, come back. Here's five bucks. Anybody want to grovel at my feet? Okay, that's a wrap. Time to lose the baby costumes. Let's do lunch. The number two. Two. One, two, two apples. The number two. 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 Two bananas. The number two. One, two. Two oranges. The number two. Oh, Elmer, give me somebody. Oh, Elmer, please. Oh, buddy. Oh, pal. Give me somebody. We've been buddies for a long time. Oh, Lefty, Elmer, I... don't grovel. Well, Nick, I was just trying to get some of his million dollars. Yeah, my Uncle Ed left me a million dollars, Nicodemus. I'm rich. <laughs> okay, here it is. One for you, and one for you. What is this, Lana? Mail came. Everybody got one. Oh. Thanks. Let's see what I got here. Dear Nick, I will be sending you a check in the amount of one million dollars. I want a million dollars. Hold it. There's some fine print here. Provided your number is drawn in the upcoming sweeps. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't real. It's a drawing and Ed Million. So you got an Uncle Ed too? Let me see your letter. Ah, just as I thought. Just like ours. Elmer, this isn't your Uncle Ed. 
and you didn't win a million dollars. This is all just a drawing. You, this isn't real. You mean? They just do this to sell magazine subscriptions. So, so I'm really not rich? I'm sorry, you're not rich. Oh. Well, wait a minute. You are rich. No, I'm not rich. Yes, you are rich. Nicodemus, what are you talking about? Well, the Bible tells us that when we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he'll provide all of our needs according to his riches in glory. So when you have faith in Jesus, then you really are rich. You mean I've been rich all along? Well, that's absolutely right. Yeah, but you don't have a million dollars, and I'm not going to grovel at your feet anymore. Uh, hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, Lefty. We don't have to grovel at anybody's feet. The Bible says we can choose to bow our knee to the wonderful name of Jesus. Boys and girls, we're all out of time on the candy store today. We're really glad you watched. And don't forget, today's letter is the letter J. And J stands for Jesus, our Savior. And today's number is the number two. One, two. We'll see you next time. You can say bye now. May, may we? Yes, you may. Bye. 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 See, see ya. Ah, I'm rich. Uh-oh. We better go tell her about Uncle Ed. Come on, let's go.